This battle will go down in military textbooks. Ukrainian soldiers from the 3rd SAV were tasked with storming the positions of the Russian invaders and pushing them back from the road of life. This battle, at a distance of a few meters from the enemy, took place here. Let's hear what the participants of this assault said about what was happening on the battlefield, about their emotions and how it all ended. So it all started as our fine commander gathered us and said, the enemy has approached the road of life that leads from Chazavyar to Bakhmut. We have to drive them back, taking into account that our third assault brigade is one of the most combat-ready units in the Bakhmut region. This task was assigned to us. Our group Alpha moved there first. We got to the spot in an M113, hopped into the trenches where our neighboring units had been. We were moving towards the road, the so-called trampoline, in order to then jump over it and enter the trenches occupied by the enemy. The first thing we saw when we dropped there was dirt, a lot of it. Our group was moving slowly. Our rifles would jam because of the dirt. We had a lot of problems along the way, but we managed to solve them. There are three lines of trenches there. The Alpha group took the right flank. They were supposed to clear the right line of the trenches. In the middle was the Bravo group. That is, our platoon had to clear the trenches in the middle. And the neighboring unit was to clear the trenches to the left. The hardest thing was to take a jump across the road, as it was under enemy fire. The enemy tried to keep that sector under their fire control and prevent our group from advancing to the other side and entrenching there. Therefore, crossing that section of the area required some character. The soil was damp and soft. Exactly because of that, the enemy's 120 millimeter projectile did not explode literally a few meters from me. I pretty much liked that moment. <laughs> Crossing that road makes one of the most thrilling moments and feelings for a fighter. That is, you step out into the open space and see, in principle, everything around you. You see Bachmann on your right, and on your left are the shelter belts from where the enemy is shooting at you. And in fact, it creates kind of a whirlwind of emotions. That's right. When you finally jump into the enemy trench, you are like, phew! and you can breathe out a little, although the most interesting part just begins at that moment. But most importantly, you cross the road and you're like, I'm alive. And then you see the rest of the guys in the group are intact and you move on. When we crossed the road, we saw many dead soldiers of the enemy lying here and there in the trenches. I don't know about the boys, but I personally had the feeling that we are where we need to be and that we will move forward. Such a morale boost. And also that we will start pushing them back and finishing them. During the first fire contact, I saw the enemy, who was wearing a helmet with Ukrainian pixel camouflage. Right, they use Ukrainian uniforms very often, both pixel and multicam. I had my first visual contact with the enemy, and I heard him shouting, I see you crops with blue on their helmets. He cried that out with such enthusiasm, so to speak. He was surprised, and by the way, they had no identification tapes on them. Straight into the pit. I tossed my second number, my war mate, a grenade. He had a better viewing angle, and accordingly, it paid off. You can see in the video how a grenade was thrown at the enemy and how the bits of the Russian world were thrown up into the air. Seen very clearly, I can't say that the enemy was weak. They were shooting back and stayed there to the last. They didn't run away at the first fire contact. At certain moments, the enemy acted very cunningly trying to take cover behind the corpses of their own soldiers. They tried to hide as much as possible, and sometimes it was very problematic to locate them. The enemy was dropping VOG and F-1 grenades from their drones. 
They have not always been successful and would sometimes happen that they were hitting their own. There was such a situation that an enemy drone flew up and we were followed what its further actions were. If it threw charges at us, we would shoot it down. If it flew past us, then everything was fine. In this way, several enemy drones were shot down by our group. I raised my head a little, and I saw a drone hovering over my combat mate. I shouted to him, fall back! And right after he moved back, a VOG grenade hit the spot where he had been standing. Such a funny situation used to occur, that our commander was running about 40 meters back and forth along the trench, and the enemy drone followed him around. And while he was distracting it, I was trying to knock it down with my rifle. That was a funny situation. And practical too. We shot down a few of their drones, and at the same time, had some laugh and worked out a bit. There, I see a f***er. If we had a delay of any kind, we were holding our ground 360. That is, some of us held the frontal sector on 12 o'clock, others on 9, 6, and 3 o'clock respectively. We were in complete control of the situation around us, because the enemy could be anywhere. The trench itself zigzags, and you do not see clearly the enemy if he lowered his profile and began to advance. In this case, you need to peek out and check if the enemy is crawling up to you so that he does not take you by surprise. Besides, you need to look left and right so the enemy does not run across the field from above. Here you can see my commanding officer, and a fucker just started running away in front of him. And I was my commander's second number covering him with my machine gun. And he was constantly screaming, see him? Then stood up and started shooting at the fucker, then ducked down again so I could cover him. I shouted to him, where? 12 o'clock, he replied, but there was no one there anymore. He killed them all. Damn, I thought to myself, and crouched down too. In two to three minutes, he stood up again and shouted, see him? Started to fire at them, then crouched down again. I stood up like, where? And that was how I could not find me a birdie to hit. Yes, right here. And here he got hit by our commander. Yes, now he's about to fall down. Goodbye. At some point, we were left without the eyes in the sky, without the drone, I mean, because the eyes had to be recharged and get the battery replaced. Notwithstanding, we had to advance further, and we had to move on. The commander made a timely decision. He stepped back, took an underbarrel grenade launcher, and simply began to sprinkle the enemy with grenades. This prevented them from getting up and locating our two guys who were moving on them. In this way, we were advancing further, covered by the intense fire of the grenade launcher. By the time we had our drone back, we had already covered 50 to 70 meters forward. It was effective because the enemy artillery is constantly firing and you can't stay in one place. Motion is life. There was a reserve group, which then moved forward with fresh guys for a shift. And there was our good combat mate named August, who was supporting the fires morally. Here you see one of our fighters get under the shelling, and August would encourage him to keep moving forward into the trench and not staying in the open field. The motivation by August. Run! F it. Nice one. Overall, our guys always support each other. There's nothing wrong about that. If you're stuck with something, your brothers in arms will always support you, cheer you up, and then keep you moving forward together. That was a rather interesting moment for Kolovrat. Can you break it down for us? It was quite fun. In the middle there was a trench in front of the road, in front of the trampoline. There were enemy trenches in 50 to 70 meters, and the enemy was running across the road from time to time. And the evacuation spot, as well as this spot, were so accurately targeted by the enemy that their 120 millimeter mines were landing literally seven meters away. Good thing it was a big muddy ditch, so the grenade just went straight into that mud and its fragments didn't hit us. A fairly large number of soldiers were shell-shocked because of the position itself, as I call it, punching bag. You just sit there with mortar shells raining down on your head.
We walked 10 to 15 meters, stopped, and the enemy shell struck the spot we had just passed. As soon as we moved further, a shell landed exactly where we had been before. That is, they constantly tried to hit us with everything they had, including unguided rockets, 120 millimeter rounds, and grad rockets. They tried to inflict at least some damage on the retreating group. The evacuation of the wounded was so difficult because they had to carry the wounded up 200 meters through the mud and sometimes destroyed trenches. As some trenches had been torn apart by mortar fire and had many holes. If we were to compare our losses there with the losses of the Russians, and in fact, we did everything fine, so to speak, no muss, no fuss. We had no KIAs. Everything went smoothly for us. And according to the calculations of both our commanders and our own, the Russians had about 50 KIAs in that area, in those trenches only. We do not know how many of them were wounded. We were completely satisfied. Boys are tigers, lions. Cool. As a result of the successful assault, the Ukrainians eliminated more than 50 invaders. They drove the Russians off the road of life, making it impossible to keep the highway under enemy fire control. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. Thank you.